In this video we will be adding our player to the game and we will also be adding some features to him so that he can start moving around. Before we can add the player we will need to add the sprites to the Unity project and I have the sprites here, the RPG assets here, which you can download from the description below or by clicking the link in the end of the video here. Um, of course you don't need to use the same sprite as I do, if you have your own sprites you can also use them, but I'm going to show you how to do it with my sprites. So I have this folder called player and I'm simply going to go to my asset folder and create a new folder called sprites and then I'm going to drag the player into this folder and then all the sprites will be added to the project. So now the sprites has been loaded and if I open up the player you'll see something called attack, idle and walk. So right now we're not going to use any animation, we will simply just use one single sprite. But when I open up this folder you will see that all these sprites are actually in sprite sheets. Uh, except if I open attack there is something called attack adjusted where everything is um, as single sprites. So if you have a sprite sheet you will have to do the same as I do now. And if you don't have a sprite sheet you can simply just s uh, skip this little step here. But let's say we want him to have the idle animation or the idle sprite. So we select the idle folder and we select idle down uh, because I want idle down to be his uh, default uh, animation. I click on idle down and I select sprite editor. And actually before I select the sprite editor I need to say that the sprite mode is a multiple sprite. So I indicate here that we are actually working on a, um, a sprite sheet. Then I say sprite editor, apply. When this opens up, I can say slice and automatic, center, pivot, that's fine, and slice. And then you'll see all the sprites have now been divided into single sprites. I click apply. And now it just sliced up the sprite sheet, so now I have every single idle sprite on its own. So I can actually select, let's say, I have idle down here, right? I can expand it and select any sprite. You can see the others I haven't done it with don't have this. You can see left side, I only have left sides because I haven't sliced it up yet. So I take it down and I drag it into the scene and you'll see the character on the screen right now. <coughs> so I think the character is quite large. Let's say this is our game window, right? And he takes up a lot of space. So let's make him a little smaller. Select down idle and find the pixels per unit and set it to 300 instead and click apply. So I'm going to go with 300. If you think he needs to be larger, then put a lower number. If you think he needs to be small, then put a larger number. For example, five, 400 or 500. Depends on what you want. So now we have down and idle here. Let's rename it to uh, player. So this is our player. So now we have the player in the game. So the next thing we need to do is to make him move. Okay. So we can right click on the asset folder click create, select a folder and write scripts. So this is our script folder. So first of all we need a player script. So let's right click, create, C sharp script and write player. And um, yeah, let's just call it player. So this script needs to be attached to the player. So you can take the player script and drag it onto the player here in your hierarchy. And when you have done that, you will see that the player script is actually sitting on the play object. So let's open up the script by double clicking on it. And I'm go just going to make my Visual Studio a little smaller here so you can see what I'm doing. And there we go. Okay, so this is the player script. First of all, we need him to be able to move, right? So let's make a new function. Let's make a function called public void move. So this function will make him move and my autocomplete just messed it up. So we have this function called move and it needs to make him move, okay? So if we want him to move, we need to change the transform component. So that means in the player here, we have to access position and we need to change this position from the script, right? So that's the transform and the position X or Y, for example, if we want to move up or down, we have to change this. So these are the things that we need to change from the script. So to do that, we simply say transform.translate 
and then we need to give him the direction let's say we want to move him to the right we say um vector two dot right so now he's moving to the right all the time but if we save this and play the game nothing is happening right now and that's because we are never executing the move function so we need to execute the move function by going to update and say move so now we are moving so if we save this and go back here he's moving to the right very fast as you can see Okay, so that's way too fast so we need to give him a um, speed so we can adjust how fast he's moving okay so let's make a private load called speed so we want to be able to set the speed from the inspector and right now if I select the player I can't see anything called speed but I would like to set it from here so I can adjust it during the gameplay or when I'm testing the game well I could do like this public load speed and save it and then you'll see that it pops up over here as speed however that's very bad practice to do that public thing um, because it's one of the object-oriented principles that we want to encapsulate stuff and hide it from other scripts. Because when something is public, I can go to any other script in the in the game and access the player and change the speed. So let's say we could actually change the player's speed from an enemy by mistake. And we don't want and want to hide it and we want to control whoever access our speed. So this public thing here is very bad. Because Uni Unity actually serializes public fields by default but we can actually also serialize a private field so we can write private and with, if we save it now you'll see this disappears but I can actually make it pop back up by using the tag serialize field so now it's private and no one else than the player can access it because when something is private it's only the player itself that can access it or the script itself that can access it and it pops up again because this one is serialized now so now I can say well I want to speed in my on my player but I'm still not using it actually so how do I do that well in my move function I need to add something to the calculation I need to add the speed so vector 2 dot right multiply it by speed multiply it by time dot delta time so what is this well time dot delta time is the time that has passed since the last update if I take this time and multiply it with my speed and whatever direction I'm moving in then my player will have the same movement speed on all uh, platforms all computers so let's say we run on my computer um, at this uh, stationary computer um, and the player moves with a certain speed well if I wouldn't multiply with delta time and I run it on my old laptop then the player will run, run slower on the old laptop because update is run less times uh, per second because if I run the game here it might run 60 FPS right 60 frames per second update runs one time per frame so that's 60 times per second he moves to the right well on my laptop it run, runs 12 FPS for example he will only move to right 12 times per second which is way less than 60 so he will run slower on my laptop to compensate for that, we can multiply our movement with time dot delta time, so that he should move this the same amount of uh, distance on uh, all platform, not dependent on CPU cycles. Okay, and then we multiply with our speed, so we can adjust it. When we have done this, we can go back, run it again. You will see that he moves, moves very fast. So let's say that our speed is um, zero point. Let's say. Um, two for example and maybe I forgot to save actually say always remember to save and now you see he moves very very slow and I can take this up a notch and I can see like 10 speed would be fine actually for him if I put it at 10 yeah then he moves fine so that's one of the things right now he has a speed and we can decide how fast he moves left and right uh, to the right at least so the next thing we have to do is to make sure we can decide what direction he moves in so we can make a new vector 2 here called direction 
So this direction will decide where he's moving. So instead of using the vector two dot right here to translate him uh, from left to right, we can actually use our direction. And that means if I would change this direction here, well then the direction he's moving in will change, right? So if I in start would say direction equals vector two dot uh, up, for example, and save this, then he will start moving up. As you can see now moves up because I changed this direction. So I will have to manipulate this direction with my keyboard. So let's make a new function here called um, get input. And this function will get our input. So if my key uh, input dot get key down key code dot w. Okay. Actually, it's not get, yeah, let's say get key down or get key, actually. Okay, so there's something called get key down and get key. Get key down is only executed when you click the key down and get key is executed when you hold it down. And we, we want to move upwards as long as we're holding down the key, not just when we just click it and move from one frame, right? So we need to look at W and A and S and D. So we need to look at when we are pressing W, A, S and D. And when we do that, we will have to change the direction. So if you don't know this if statements, so the code in here will only execute if the condition up here is met, which means if I press W, all code are right in here will be executed. If I press A, all code are right in here will be executed and so on. That means if I say direction equals to vector two dot up when I actually plus equal with vector two dot up when I press W, then you'll see that if I clear this and say up here direction equals vector two dot zero. So the reason that I'm doing this is that I add the vector here. And if I don't zero it out, it will be larger and larger. He will run faster and faster for every loop. Um, so if I hold W down, it will add vector two to up to direction and he will keep moving faster and faster. I'm not interested in that. I want to keep the same speed. So after every loop, I will reset the direction. Okay, so now we're moving, but before we're moving, we will need to access get input or execute get input. So now we are getting our input. What keys are the player pressing? When we have pressed the keys, we translate him in the direction based on the keys we just pressed. So this is very simple right now, but it will be more complicated later when we start adding animations to this. So we press up, he moves upwards now. So I need to do the same for the rest. So if I press A, I'm going to the left, which to the left. If I press S, it's vector two dot down. And if I press D, it's vector two dot right. Okay, so now we have set it up for all directions. So I can play the game. And now you'll see that I can move this character around. He's a little bit too fast though. So let's put it at five speed. And now you'll see that he's move, moving slower. So right now you saw that if I change the speed now to 500, for example, and I move around, he moves 500. But when I stop playing the game, it resets to whatever it was before I played, if you don't know that. So every time, e everything you change during play will always be resets when, reset when you stop playing the game. So now we have a player that can move around in our world. Um, I think that's what we're going to do in this video. And in the next video, we will look at some more uh, efficient scripts, we will create something called a character script and move some functionality over there so um, that we can actually expand this, uh, this functionality to our enemies and so on. So, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching my video. Please remember that Inscope Studios is a community found page, so please consider clicking the support link on the screen to see how you can support me and get something back in return.